dear students welcome today in this module we will be discussing about plastic waste now you know plastic has occupied an indispensable place in our society now what is the reason for this the properties which they possess are the main reason behind that now what are those properties lightweight flexibility durability then the resistance to chemicals temperature and microbial attack are some of the properties due to which plastic waste has become an important part of our society we are using plastics in every part of our day now due to this there are huge generation of plastic waste this has resulted in a lot of health and environmental effects you might have come across in recent times a uh, uh, lot many articles regarding plastic waste like plastic waste in the marine environment you might have seen many animals getting entangled due to this plastic waste which is there in the marine environment you you might have also heard like many animals consuming these plastic or poly bags and then they get choked and then they die so this is a reason why plastic waste has gained more importance now in this module we will be discussing about we'll define what is plastic then we'll see what are the classification we will identify the different sources and then we'll talk about the waste management aspect with this introduction let's look into the learning objectives of this module now the learning objectives of this module would be to define what is plastic what are the classification of plastic based on its thermal property and its size then we will identify the various sources from where plastics are generated then we will also discuss about certain health and environmental effects caused by the plastic disposal or unsafe dumping then we will discuss about the different plastic waste management where we will discuss about the many different treatment options which are available now plastics as i told you earlier they are one of the most widely used material in the world they occupy an indispensable part due to their properties like flexibility durability lightweight easy to carry carry and they are resistant to chemicals light heat temperature then microbial attack etc now they are generally polymers of high molecular weight and they are prepared from three main sources like petroleum coal and cellulose now iupac defines plastic as polymeric material that contain other substances to improve performance or reduce the cost majority of plastics contain organic polymers formed from chains of carbon or in addition to oxygen nitrogen or sulfur the plastics are classified into different types based on their thermal property as well as on size now based on thermal property they are classified into three types one thermosets thermoplastics and elastomers now thermosets are very hard and they are tight meshed branched molecular structure now once they are shaped into a proper form they cannot be reshaped even after heating now the second type is your elastomers these are plastics that have a cross linked structure with loose mesh than the thermosets they possess property of elasticity now once the elastomers that are shaped again they cannot be reshaped upon heating example is your automobile tires the third type based on thermal property is your thermoplastics they have a linear or branched structure which are very flexible even at ordinary temperature their molecular structure determines their strength and thermal behavior now they undergo a lot of chemical changes while you heat them and they can be molded and remolded again and again examples are your polythene polyvinyl chloride your poly bags are also one uh, example of this thermoplastics now based on size plastics are classified again into three types one macroplastics where the size is greater than 20 mm in diameter the second one is mesoplastic where the size is between 5 mm to 20 mm in diameter and the third one is microplastics where the size of the material is less than 5 mm in diameter now the types of plastics which are generally used in common day to day life it's listed in this table 
you can see symbols on the left side how they are designated. For example, polyethylene tetraphthalate is designated by the symbol. Uh, you have this uh, three arrows and inside you have one and uh, below that you have PETE which denotes polyethylene tetraphthalate. Now polyethylene tetraphthalate or PET bottles are generally used for making these plastic bottles where uh, to store soft drinks or cooking oil and so on. The property wise you see they are very clear, strong and lightweight and they can be recycled. The second type is high density polyethylene, it is also called as HDPE. He, this, these are used for milk containers, cleaning agents, shampoo bottles and bleach bottles. They are very stiff, hard and they are very difficult to be broken by sunlight. Again they can be recycled. The third type is your polyvinyl chloride which is used for manufacturing plastic pipes, vinyl flooring, cable insulation and roof sheeting. They are rigid, soft via plasticizers and they are used in construction, healthcare and electronic industry. Often they are not recycled because of their chemical properties. However, sometimes you do uh, uh, local recycling for polyvinyl chloride. The fourth one is your low density polyethylene also called as LDPE. These are used in manufacturing plastic bags, food wraps where bre bread, fruit, vegetables are packed. The property wise if you see they are lightweight, low cost, versatile but they do not have or they cannot withstand mechanical or thermal stress. These cannot be recycled due to the stress factor. The fifth type is your polypropylene which is denoted by PP and they are used for manufacturing bottle lids, food tubes, furnitures, ropes, automobile parts and so on. Property wise they are very tough and resistant. They act like a effective barrier against water and chemicals. Now what about the recyclable quality? They cannot be recycled and often they are not recycled and again they go, you can do certain local recycling. The sixth type is your polystyrene where it is denoted as PS and they are used for uh, like uh, manufacturing food, takeaway containers, plastic cutleries and egg trays. Property wise they are lightweight but they are structurally weak and easily dispersed. Again they cannot be recycled. The last category are other plastics, example acrylic, polycarbonate and polyacetic fibers. They are generally used in water coolers, bottle manufacturing, baby cups and fiber glasses. They are very diverse in nature and they have a multiple or different types of properties. Again, they cannot be recycled because uh, if you go for recycling, the risk of contamination is very, very high. So generally these plastics are not taken for recycling. Now let's discuss about the sources of plastic waste generation. Now as I told you earlier plastics are being used in everyday life in every aspects of your life. Starting from your bathing items to your food items everything comes now in a plastic wrapped packs. Now there are many different categories of plastic waste from where the plastic waste is generated. This pie chart shows the different percentage of waste generated from different sectors. In this you can see the maximum of 18.6% comes from the confectionaries like your chips packs, lays, kurkure, all these packs contribute 18.6%. Then comes your bottles, caps and lids which contributes to 11.9% followed by pet bottles where you have 10%. The other category, the other plastics are that they occupy second uh, next place that is 8.5 percent. These uh, supermarket retail bags, straws they contribute 7.4 and 7 percent respectively. The garbage bags are 6.7 percent. Plastics from packaging industry it is it contributes to 6.7 percent. Food bags 5.2 percent. Then you have these juice bottles, water soft drink bottles that contributes to 3.4 and 2.6 percent. Likewise, food containers, milk bottles and pack rings, they contribute 1.7, 1.6 and 1.4 percent respectively. Even the cigarette lighter contains plastic and they contribute 1.2 percent of plastic waste generation. Different industries that use or consume plastic for their different purposes. 
Uh, in this pie chart, if you see, the maximum amount of plastic is used by the packaging industry, which contributes to 42%, followed by your consumer products, where around 24% of plastics are consumed. Then comes your building and construction industry, where 14% of plastic is used, and then is your industrial goods, where 13% of plastic is used. Others contribute 7% of plastic. Now, let's discuss about the effects of plastic waste. Now, plastic waste, as I told you earlier, they are being used on a larger scale without even realizing what are the effects that they are causing to the environment. They are just disposed of into the open area. Now, let's discuss about certain health and environmental effects that they cause. First, plastics reduce the fertility of soil. If you see, when these plastics are there, plants do not grow because these plastics block the absorption of nutrients and water in them. Then they emit when they are just disposed of in a landfill or in an open area, they keep continuously emitting the volatile organic carbon. Again, this becomes an air pollutant. Also, during Plastic incineration, during burning or incineration process, a lot of gaseous pollutants are released, like your carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, your socks, they are released and again, they act like a major air pollutant and they cause a lot of respiratory disease. Your, you have respiratory problems, asthma, all these things will occur. Now, also during the burning of plastics, certain carcinogens like your dioxins and furans are released during the incineration process or burning process. Again, they affect your body. Also, when you see a, a huge dump or a pile of plastic waste, generally it influences or affects the aesthetic of that particular area and hygiene of the area. When these plastics are thrown into the drains or sewer networks, they block them and choke them and as a result, a chaos is created. Now, when these pollutants are dumped or when they enter into the water bodies, they contaminate them. They also contaminate the surface water as well as the groundwater. Health-wise, uh, these uh, plastics, when they are dumped in the soil or water body, through the food chain, it enters into the different components of the ecosystem, starting from your abiotic components like the soil, water and the biotic components, all living organisms. Now, you must, you must have also heard about the uh, animals eating these poly bags and the poly bags get choked or then uh, the digestion does not occur and they get choked in the digestive system and at the end, the animals die. Also, in the marine environment, you can see a lot of um, animals, uh, especially turtles, that get entangled with a plastic bag in, around their neck. This suffocates, chokes them and at the end, they die. The diseases as such, if you see, they cause a lot of diseases starting from your birth defects, cancer, ulcer, thyroid problems, also the nervous system problem and entire immune system is affected. Dear students, in the first part, we discussed about what is plastic. We defined plastic, we saw what are the properties then we discussed the classification of plastics based on the thermal property as well as on the size. Based on thermal property, we discussed about thermo thermosets, thermoplastics and elastomers. Then based on size, we discussed about micro and mesoplastics. Then we uh, discussed about the various different types of plastics and their properties, whether you can recycle them or not. Then we started discussing about from where does this plastic actually come from. So then we uh, saw a pie chart where it showed like what are the different sectors that contribute to the plastic pollution. Then we also saw what are the different se sectors that consume major amount of plastics. There we saw the packaging industry con uh, uh, consumes more amount of plastics. Then we started discussing about the different health effects that are associated with the plastics. Also, we discussed about the various environmental effects that the plastic dumping causes. Now, in the part two, we will discuss about plastic waste management. There, we will be discussing about recycling, incineration, pyrolysis and landfill dumping. 
Under plastic waste management, recycling is one of the major management step which you, you can consider for plastics. Recycling is a combination of several technologies that are carried out on waste plastic, especially to produce a secondary raw material. It is different from reuse because the material they do not return for remanufacturing. Uh, the concept of recycling can be broadly defined as recovery of material from waste for the purpose that would otherwise require the consumption of virgin resources. The recycling process requires generally participation of public because the public they are using these plastics so if they start segregating them at the source or wherever it is generated then recycling will be more efficient and cost effective too. So the recycling process requires participation of public for the separation of waste material at the initial stages. Due to plastics chemical property, the recycling of waste plastic poses some technical complication because the plastics it is not like made up of only one material, it is having a lot of material uh, in that and each one has chem uh, different chemical property. So you have, you face a lot of technical problems while uh, recycling them. Now efficient collection and separation of waste plastics again leads to enhanced re recycling efficiency. Now, as I told you earlier, plastic is made up of a wide variety of resins or polymers with different chemical characteristics. This we have already discussed two types of plastics, thermoplastics and thermoset plastics. Thermoplastics again they are formed uh, a new, uh, can form a new product by the application of waste and 80% of plastics are thermoplastics. Now household uh, plastics like uh, polyolefins, like polyethylene, uh, then uh, LPDE, polyethylene tetraphthalate, then uh, polypropylene, these are all, all some examples of thermoplastics. Now thermoset plastics lose its ability when you heat them, that means they cannot be remolded uh, due to heat or pressure and they become very rigid and hard. Now polymers, for example, if you see polyethylene, they cannot be easily recycled by simple chemical methods like your condensation polymers. They require certain techniques like pyrolysis is generally involved for this process to produce refined petrochemical products because pyrolysis is nothing but again burning of waste or uh, in the devoid condition of in the absence of oxygen at a temperature. Now this results in the formation of petrochemical products like which is similar to gasoline and these petrochemical products can be used as a raw material for manufacturing other products. There are various approaches used for recycling of waste plastics. Some of them are primary recycling, mechanical recycling and plastic recycling. Now we will discuss each one of them in detail. Now primary recycling, it is the in plant process of recycling of waste scrap material. Within the plant, whatever waste that is generated, it is recycled then and there. In mechanical recycling, it involves separation of plastic polymer from the contaminants, then you reprocess them through melting, shredding and any other related process. Now the separation of res resins are done according to the chemical characteristics. Now due to the variation in the melting point, uh, they do not have a definite temperature where it melts. So a batch of plastic resin may uh, be fully transformed at a particular temperature, but another batch will uh, have a different temperature for melting purpose where it will show only partial transformation. So it is always essential that if you segregate them properly then it is uh, the mechanical recycling can be achieved properly. Now the mechanical recycling of waste plastics are mostly carried out with a single polymer waste stream to achieve maximum efficiency and you can achieve homogeneity in them or uh, in the products that they are, uh, that are produced. So mechanical recycling is generally done at a temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius and during this process you can uh, find a lot of toxic gas that is being released from the chamber. The third type is your plastic recycling process. It is also called as chemical recycling or feedstock recycling. It leads to complete or partial depolymerization of plastics. Now, here processes like pyrolysis, hydrogenation and gasification are used for recycling the plastics. Generally uh, any 
One of these methods can be used depending upon the need of secondary material, availability of technology and economic feasibility. Uh, as I told you earlier, chemical recycling either depolymerizes the monomers or partially degrades them into secondary commercial products. Now here pyrolysis is used as one method for converting into uh, the secondary commercial products. Now pyrolysis as I briefed you earlier, pyrolysis is a process where the waste is thermally destructed under oxygen free condition that results in formation of gaseous, liquid and solid fraction. It is an endothermic process and it uh, causes thermal cracking and condensation reactions. The major compounds generated depends upon the organic characteristics of the compounds. Like as I told you three major compounds are formed, one is gases, the second one is liquid and third one is solid. Under gases you have hydrogen, methane, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide generation uh, and the liquid you have tar oil stream uh, which contains the acetic acid, acetone and methanol. The solid char consists of pure carbon and some inert materials in them. Now pyrolysis is done at a range of temperature based on the temperature again they are categorized into three types low, medium and high. Low is done at a temperature of 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. Uh, one example you can see polyethylene and polypropylene they result in the generation of high calorific value gases and waxes when they are uh, uh, subjected to pyrolysis unit. Uh, also hydrocarbons are uh, produced along with this gases and wax material. The produced gaseous fractions then uh, they have a very high calorific value and can be used as a feedstock. Medium they are operated between 500 to 700 degrees Celsius. The third type that is high uh, temperature type they uh, are operated at a temperature greater than 700 degrees Celsius. Uh, example you can see again polypropylene and polyethylene at very high temperature they produce olefins. Now these olefin mixture has a potential to be reused for the production of polyolefins. The next method in plastic waste management is your incineration process. Now incineration again it is a burning process or you can call it as a combustion process where the waste is subjected to a very high temperature of 900 to 1100 degrees Celsius in the presence of oxygen. Now again the end product is a inert solid material and a lot many gaseous pollutants are generated. Now incineration again they are used for energy recovery too. During incineration the hydrocarbons uh, of the combustible residue generally combine with molecular oxygen and that is how carbon dioxide, water and inert residues are generally formed. Now in addition to these compounds like your carbon dioxide, water, inert residue, oxides of metals and minerals, you also see formation of hydrochloric acid. Now this hydrochloric acid is generally neutralized by the basic nature of inert ash. Otherwise what happens is HCl corrodes your inner wall of the incinerator. Uh, to also you can reduce or neutralize the HCl production by applying lime and avoid corrosion. Now dioxins, furans and uh, PAH like polyaromatic hydrocarbons are also produced at temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. Now at a temperature of 700 to 900 degrees Celsius polymers undergo complete combustion by chemical degradation method. The dioxins furan precursor reacts in the presence of this uh, ash to form new dioxins and furans which is little harmful for an incineration process. Now incineration process is associated with a lot many advantages and of disadvantages. Advantages as such if you see they require a very less area, they are used for energy generation. Uh, it reduces the volume of waste by 90% and uh, by mass it reduces by 75%. Now immediate disposal without waiting for slow biodegradation process uh, is another advantage of the incineration process. Disadvantage as such if you see it is very energy intensive because you use a very high temperature and the gaseous pollutants as such if you see for example your carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, oxides of sulphur, oxides of nitrogen they are harmful because when they are released into the uh, atmosphere they are going to pollute the uh, air. To avoid these air pollution problem you can have uh, air pollution control device um, to stop 
these gaseous pollutants. Sometimes fly ash uh, is also generated again to control that you can have certain uh, particulate matter control devices like your uh, ESPs, electrostatic precipitators, cyclone separators, etc. The last method under plastic waste management is your landfilling. We can also call it as a disposal option. Now landfills are engineered structure, they contain your waste and they avoid contamination of the environmental matrices. Like for example, you have a proper liner at the bottom at the sides so that the leachate or the watery liquid that comes out from the waste material does not enter into the soil and through soil it does not enter into the groundwater and during surface runoff is also avoided and it does not pollute your surface water bodies. On top, you cover it again with polymer and a soil layer so that the rainfall does not enter into the waste that is loaded into the landfill. So as a result, you, the generation of leachate is minimized. Also, the exposure to the air is minimized. So as a result, all different environmental matrices like your water, soil, air are protected when you load the plastics into a controlled landfill. The reactions, whatever occurs, the plastics, how it undergoes or what are the degradation as such if you see. The plastics are very resistant to microbial attack and they remain in the environment for a long period of time. Uh, in landfills, they undergo different process like your chemical degradation, thermal degradation, photo degradation and biodegradation. Chemical due to action of certain chemicals, thermal due to exposure of heat, photo degradation is due to exposure of sunlight and biodegradation is by the action of microorganisms. The principal mechanism for biodegradation of high molecular weight plastic polymer is basically enzymatic oxidation or hydrolysis. It creates certain functional groups which further improves the hydrophilicity of the plastics. Now these functional groups makes the plastic resin more prone to gradual degradation to its mono monomers through enzymatic actions of several microbes. That means the polymers are broken down or it is attacked by the microorganisms and they uh, attach certain functional groups to, to, to this polymers. Now these functional groups increase the hydrophilicity of plastics which will favor hydrolysis. Then they will be broken down into monomers and now the monomers will be easy for the bacteria or any other microbes to digest uh, by applying its enzymes. The monomers are further mineralized to carbon dioxide and water under aerobic condition and along with this if methane carbon dioxide is produced then it is under anoxic condition. Uh, generally if you see these traditional pr plastics does not undergo biodegradation and they disintegrate into tiny particles which eventually uh, get liberated and contaminate the groundwater. Now let us discuss about some of the recent approaches which are being used or developed for plastic waste management. The plastics can also be used as a fuel in cement kins. So this is one recent approach where application of plastic as a fuel in cement kins. Now the as you know plastic has a very high calorific value, calorific value or heating value. So they can be used along with other fuel material to uh, in uh, cement kins. Now it is one of the effective way by which waste can be reduced, I mean the plastic waste can be reduced. Now due to extreme temperature uh, that occur inside the uh, uh, cement kins, you do not have any uh, toxic gas generation again which is very good. Now waste plastics uh, as I told you earlier they have a very high calorific value and uh, they are suited for burning chlorinated plastics, example your PVC. Here when you do this. HCl and chlorine gas produced can be easily neutralized. Again this process does not produce any solid or ash and they cause less air pollution due to that. The next important recent approach is production of refined fuels. Again here pyrolysis is used where uh, pyrolysis results in the conversion of plastic waste into gas, liquid tar and a solid char material. Now by using certain catalyst, the long chain polymers are broken down into simpler substances and 
these petrochemical products are as equal to gasoline and they can be refined and used as a fuel. Now the third type is uh, plastic in road lane. This is again uh, with, uh, being popularly used. Now for this the plastic waste will be collected, segregated and stored. Then they will be cleaned and dried. Further they will be shredded to a size of 2 to 4 mm. After it is shredded, it is kept aside, you can take these stone aggregates like your granite or ceramic and it, you can heat it up to 160 to 170 degrees Celsius. Then the shredded polymers uh, uh, around 5 to 10 percent by weight by weight volume is added to these uh, stone aggregates and again they are heated for 30 to 40 seconds. After this, the coated aggregate is mixed with hot bitumen at a temperature in the range of 156 to 163 degrees Celsius and then they are used for um, road laying. The last recent approach for uh, plastic waste management is conversion of plastics into liquid fuel. Now this is uh, under research. Uh, what do people do is the plastic waste is loaded into a closed container and it is subjected to a very high temperature of 2700 to 3000 degrees Celsius and during this process it is converted into the waste is burnt or converted into a liquid gaseous vapor. Now this liquid gaseous vapor again it is condensed into a tarry liquid and the gas is being separated. Now this tarry liquid can be used as a fuel. To summarize, at the end of this module, we have defined what is plastics, now how plastics play an important role in the day-to-day -day life and how they had occupied an indispensable part of the society due to their properties. Then we classified them based on the thermal and size. Then we discussed about the different sources from where the plastics arise and what are the different sectors that consume plastics. In that we saw packaging industry consume a high amount of plastics. Then we discussed about various environmental and health effects that occur due to unsound environmental dumping or open dumping of plastics. Then we started discussing about the plastic waste management. Under that we discussed about conventional methods of plastic waste management like your recycling where we discussed about mechanical plastic recycling and primary recycling. Then we discussed about uh, the second method like incineration, then about the disposal option landfills. Then we also discussed about certain new and alternate approaches which have come in waste management of plastic. I hope this module would have been of help to you. Thank you.